Okay guys, so in this video we're going to perform an equal unpaired independent student t-test. Firstly, what we're going to have to do is just work out whether this is equal or unequal and then after that we're going to perform our t-test based on an equal t-test because I do already know that this is going to be an equal t-test. So let's look at how we're going to do that here now. So what we have here first is two groups. These are both independent groups. That's how we know this is an unpaired test. So there's two separate groups. Now a paired test will be the same group tested pre say drug or pre training whatever and then they'd be test tested post training or post drug or whatever but in, in this situation we have two groups and one group is getting a drug tested for a drug and seems to have an effect on them and the other is a control group that is just getting tested with a placebo and seeing what sort of effect that has on them. This is the numbers that we have for both of these groups and what we're going to do now is we're going to work out firstly whether there's uh, equal or unequal variance between these groups and then we're going to work out our t-test. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, find n for this row here which is just the number of entries in our control group. So we we'll just go put in count, select our whole control group here, close bracket, press enter and that will equal n. Now I know we could have done that in our head but it's just in case we add another cell in here in future. Now we'll do the same for y, so we'll put in equals count, our bracket, select this whole column here, click enter, and that's 12 as well. Now what we have to do is we have to find our mean. So we find our mean with equals average, and then we're going to select our whole column here again, our control column, and click enter. And we're going to do the same for y. So what we'll do is equals average. Select our whole column here and click enter. So these are our two means now, 18.5 and 18.33. So now we're going to have to find each of our entries minus our mean. So x minus x bar and then we're going to have to find y minus y bar. So to do that we'll just press equals. And we'll go and take the number 23 here and then we're going to press minus and go down to our mean here and we can press enter now but just for excel what we can do is just add a dollar sign in here before the b and a dollar sign before the 17 and what that is going to do is just keep this as our reference cell so in a second now we're going to pull our formula down through all these cells and what's that what that's going to do just the dollar signs here is just keep this as the reference cell so that when we're pulling our formula down our reference cell doesn't get pulled down in line with it so just press enter and now what we're going to do is just start pulling our formula down and it's going to autofill all our sums of x minus x bar down through the rows here and now we're going to do the same for y minus y bar so we're going to take each cell entry here and we're going to minus the mean from it so we'll just put in equals select our cell click minus go to our mean and again we're going to put in our dollar signs to keep that as our reference cell put in our two dollar signs click enter and now we're going to drag our formula down all the way so it auto fills for all these rows here now what we're going to do is we're going to square the differences here so let's press equals go and select this cell here and we're going to go and take put in our caret symbol by pressing shift and six and then we're going to just press two to square it and that gives us 20.25 and then we're just going to go and pull our formula down again so it auto fills all the answers for us here and then we're going to go over here and we're going to do the exact same again so we're going to select our y difference entry here we're going to press shift and six for the caret symbol and then press 2 to square it and we're going to pull that entry down for all our cells here. Now what we want to do is get our totals here for x minus x bar squared and y minus y bar squared. So we're going to press equals and we're going to put in sum bracket and we're going to select all these rows and add them all up together and press enter. And now we're going to do the exact same for this column here. So equal sum bracket select our column close bracket and enter and that gives us our answer there so now to get the variance 
all we have to do for our variance is take our summed columns of x minus x bar squared and y minus y bar squared and divide them by our degrees of freedom. And what our degrees of freedom are, are the number of rows that we have in each column minus one. So how we'll do that is we'll just go and press equals and we'll select x minus x bar squared here, the sum of all those rows, and we'll put in a divide sign, so just a slash for divide sign, bracket, n here, minus 1, which is just the number 11, and press enter. And that gives us our variance for x, which is 15.8, and now for our variance of y, we're going to press equals again, and select our value for y, for the sum of y, put in our divide sign there, bracket, n, minus one and press enter and that gives us a sum of 17.88 now to find our f stat what we're going to do is take our highest valued variance and divide it by our lowest valued variance so we'll just press equals select variance y here put in our divide sign select variance x and press enter and that gives us our f stat so now what we have to do is find our f critical value. So let's just look at how we'll do that by bringing a window over here. So if we just look up an f distribution table here and just click in on any one here, the way we're gonna do this, we're using an alpha level of 0 0.05. So we're gonna look at our degrees of freedom. So firstly, we'll go over here to 11. As we can see, we don't have 11. So we'll go one higher to 12. And then we'll go down here to 11. And we can find that our F critical value is 2.78. But what I would rather do is use a F critical calculator to give us a really specific value because as you can see there isn't the number 11 here so we can't get a really accurate value but if we go to an f critical value calculator we should be able to get a really accurate reading for ourselves so let's go and look here at this one go down to f critical here and we're going to put in 11 and 11 and calculate for f and as we can see we got a critical value of 2.818 so let's copy that and go back to our Excel file and we'll just paste that in here. So now as we can see, our F stat is lower than our F critical value. So what that means is this is an equal test. If our F stat had been higher than our F critical value, that would mean that's an unequal test and we'd have to perform the rest of our T test in a different way. But this is how we're going to do this for an equal unpaired independent student t-test. So now let's look at some of the values that we have in here because the formula that we're going to use for um, calculating our t-statistic is this one here. So it's x1 minus x2 where x2 is going to be y and then what we have is u1 minus mu2 which is the population uh, me metrics which are just going to be zero because we don't actually have them and generally you won't have them so they'll always be zero and then we're going to have to work out this little area under here too and i'm going to show you exactly how to do that now so let's look at what we have here so n1 we have that already so n1 is 12 so n1 is just 12 and n2 is 12 now they could be different if these columns were longer but as we saw here they're just both 12. So our degrees of freedom are just both these numbers minus 1. So we'll just say equals 12 minus 1 and same for this one here equals this value n2 minus 1. So that's our degrees of freedom 1 and degree of freedom 2. And now for x bar which is our mean we have that already so our mean equals 18.5 our mean for y equals 18.33 and then sx2 which is our variance for x equals 15.18 and our variance for y equals 17.88 now what we need to do is work out sp2 for this area down here so we can work out the bottom part of our t equation so basically what this formula here is just saying that we need to multiply our degrees of freedom for x, which is 11, by our variance for x, which is 15.8, as you can see here. And then it's saying that we're going to need to 
uh, multiply our degrees of freedom for y here by our variance for y, which is here. And then we're going to have to we're going to have to divide all that by n1 plus n2. So the number of entries in column x and column y minus two. So let's do that now. So what we're going to do is just press equals. Go up here to our degrees of freedom, press shift 8 for multiply, and then we're going to go down here and select our variance for x and click enter. And that gives us a total of 16698. Now we're going to do the exact same for our values for y, so we're going to go and press equals, select our degrees of freedom for y, select multiply and our variance for y and click enter. And that gives us a total for y of 196.68. And now we're gonna to have to add both of these together as you can see from the formula here. So we're gonna add both of these numbers together. So equals this number plus this number, click enter. And that's 363.66. So that's our top value here at the top of our formula for SP2. And now for our degrees of freedom here, we're going to put in equals. And we're going to select N1 plus N2 minus 2 and click enter, which gives us degrees of freedom, total degrees of freedom of 22. And now finally, all we're going to do here, this looks very complicated, but all we're going to do is going to divide the top part of our formula by the bottom part of our formula. So we're just going to click equals. Select our 363.66 and divide by our degrees of freedom and click enter. And that gives us an SP2 of 16.53. So now that we have the values that for SP2, this means that we have everything that we need for this formula here. So X1 being the mean of X, our first column, and x2 being the mean of y, our second column, then we can just ignore this area here basically, which is just the means of our populations. We don't know those, so it'd be just zero that we'll be entering in for both of these. Then we already know sp2, which is 16.53 that we found here, and we already know n1 and n2, which are both 12. So our formula is coming together and it's pretty easy to find out from this point on. So let's go and calculate first the mean of x minus the mean of y. So we'll just put equals in here, go up to x, press minus and minus the mean of y and press enter. And that gives us 0 0.17. Now we have our population means which are just zero minus zero because we don't actually know our population means. So this entry here, generally you won't see it in most formulas because we don't generally ever know the population means. So then our entries here for uh, this value minus this value, again, since this is zero, it's just gonna be 0 0.17 again, um, but we'll just do it right just in case sometime you do actually have the population means press enter there so that gives us our 0 0.17 again so now we have to find sp2 divided by n1 so we'll just put in equals take sp2 value here put in our divide sign and take n1 up there press enter and that gives us 1.3775 then we'll press we have to do the same again for sp2 and this time for n2 which is the number of rows in column Y, which should give us the exact same result again. So let's just press equals, select our row for SP2, put in our divide sign and find N2, click enter. And that gives us 1.3775 again. Now what we have to do is add both of these values together, as you can see here in the formula. So we just click equals, select one cell, put in plus, select the other cell, press enter. And that gives us a total value of 2.755. And now we have to find the square root of this value of 2.755. So we'll just do that by pressing equals and SQRT. Put in our value here, close our bracket, press enter. And that gives us this value of 1.65 or basically just 1.66 overall. And now 
Again, this looks very complicated, this whole thing, but we already know the top value up here is our value of 0 0.17, and we already know that our bottom value is this value of 1.659, or basically just 1.66, and we're just going to divide this top value of 0 0.17 by this bottom value of 1.66. So we'll just press equals, select our top value here. Actually, we should really select, just to get things right, we'll select this value here, since this is including the population mean. We'll press our divide symbol here, then we'll just select everything for the bottom of our formula, and we press enter here, and that gives us 0 0.1024. So basically that gives us a T stat of 0 0.102. And now what we need to do is find our T critical value. So to find our T crit value, all we have to do is look online for a, a T distribution table. There's many of these that you can find online. They're all very easy to use. And since our since from our hypothesis test here, we can see that our test is a two-tailed test because it's either equals or not equals, and our alpha value is 0 0.05, all we're going to have to do is come over to our T distribution table and go down to where it says two-tailed. So here's our two-tailed T distribution table. And now we know that our alpha value is 0 0.05, and we know that our degrees of freedom are 22. And just in case you weren't sure of that, our degrees of freedom are 22 because we calculated it up here. So DF equals N1 plus N2. So the number of entries in column one, or the number of entries for X and the number of entries in column two, which otherwise is the number of entries for Y, which is 24 overall, minus two, it gives us 22. So that means that we have 22 degrees of freedom. So we go down here to 22, and we're in our alpha for 0 0.05, and we find our T crit is 2.074. So what we'll do is go back to Excel here and paste that in here and what we can see here from this is that our t stat so our t stat at 22 degrees of freedom is lower than our t critical value so this means because it's lower it's outside of our rejection zone so we will fail to reject the null hypothesis and we're unable to provide support for our alternative hypothesis